me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations. Man is gifted, y'all. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Huh. Like Peter said, some things keep us humble, y'all. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Oh, my goodness. I got to read 10 because it's lining up with the message I just preached. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Like I said before, a lot of times your giftings, your blessings, your callings, your abilities, the anointing that's on you will cause other people to resent you highly. They would, they have to in their own mind because they're dealing with you through their flesh. God is dealing with you in the spirit, but they're dealing with you through their flesh and they resent you. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. So, just to give you a quick example, and then I'm going to stop. Years ago, I had left one church and gone to another church. And this one woman who didn't know me from Adam prophesied over me. And she said, God is showing me a giant hand. And the hand has been on top of your head, pushing you down, stifling, stifling, stifling. She said the reason for the giant hand and the stifling was not the hand of God. You have been treated with disrespect. You have been treated with contempt from the body of Christ, from all forms of leadership in the body of Christ. It has hurt you deeply, but God says no more. No more will that hand stifle you. No more. Will jealousy hold you back? No more will jealousy put you down. No more will jealousy try to put your light out. Because I saw myself as small being treated that way so long, I couldn't see what anybody would be jealous of. But I had a friend She's one of my best friends, Edie. She had told me two years before this woman prophesied over me. And I said, oh, Edie just loves me. She loves me. I know that's just a friendship. And she was saying, girl, the reason so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, she's seeing it. The reason this one, that one, and the other one, they, girl, look at all the gifts God gave you. Look at how God uses you. Look at, look at just how you are. They could never do that. They could never measure. And I'm saying, oh, she just loves me. But here, this woman didn't know me from Adam and totally confirmed everything Edie said. Some of you can't see what they see in you because you're still looking at your eyes. You're looking through the eyes of insecurity when you look at yourself in the mirror. But they see the greatness and they want to stifle that greatness because they can't stand the fact that you tower over them in stature. They can't stand it. They can't deal with it. Amen. That is so That is so true. That is so true. I went through that. I think I told you, I shared with you how I used to get bullied all the time in school. And yes. They, they used to say, oh, if she thinks this and she thinks that. And I'm like, I don't think any of that. What are they talking about? Right. And... You know, it used to be something that used to be with me, you know, ever since I was young. And then, like I said, when I was praying, a lot of that stuff came from family members. That's what, that's what's hurtful, you know, um, when, it's, when it's from family. Yes. And I remember 
I remember when I got when I got saved, I got saved in the eighth grade. The people the people that you would think would be like, Oh well that's good, you know. You know, she's she's not going in the wrong direction. She's that that's God in her life, you know, encouraging me. The very people that should have been doing that were the ones that say, Oh, you're gonna be a holy roller now and Okay, yeah. And I'm like, Wow But all it did was push me closer to the Lord because I realized at a young age, I think I was like 13 or 14, that, you know what, talking to myself, God is all, you are, you, are, you really bad. I think I realized that then. But it, it, did, it didn't take that pain away. It didn't take that pain away. Right. That didn't start happening. My skin, my skin didn't start getting sick until I got grown, you know. Up in, you know, I think after I had my child, my, that's when my skin started thickening. When I had, mm-hmm. had, had my baby, it changes you when you have a child. Because it's not about you anymore, you know. You got something to kind of focus on, but you know, like I like I said, you know, what, everything you're saying is so true. And I was told from a friend of mine that sees this in you, and I see that in you, and I was thinking the same thing. Oh, you're just saying that because you're my friend. But they said no, and the reason why you don't see it is because God doesn't want it to corrupt you. Because if you could see what we all see, it would make you a very unlikable person. And I was like, "Oh, that makes sense." Mm-hmm. So I, I relate to that. What you what you just said there, you know. And I know that where I'm weak, God is strong. So I can rejoice in being weak because I have I have weaknesses, you know. God said, "Hey, my power is made what great in weakness." And I don't really care anymore. I really don't care what anybody thinks. I do care about what Jesus thinks. And I, I'll leave this with you. Um, I saw this in a post sometimes. Somebody said something about, um, you know, people are cutting you off and, you know, they don't want to talk to you no more and everything. And in the post it said, I'm, I'm just fine with that. The only person I'm worried about cutting me off is Jesus. That's, <laughs> that's right. That's all I care about. That's right. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's, that's all right. I care about. That's a healthy place to be. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Father, Father God is the... Uh, Revealing to me a lot of a lot of people, some on this line, some that are not on this line, but there's a heaviness of regret and 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 um, uh, people right now because of what's going on, it's a spirit. I see a spirit looming over the earth, and it's a spirit of despair, a spirit of regret. Uh, a lot of people are going through. In this isolation quarantine thing, they've got a lot of time to think, and a lot of people are faced with themselves. They are faced with things that, you know, they were so busy, you know, working or whatever. Now, I think that's gone, it's taken away, and now it's just them. And a lot of people are really not handling it very well. I mean, really, I'm feeling some people are feeling almost suicidal, even. Um, I mean, there are some things that they've just been running from, running from. This is a heaviness, a heaviness um, over this planet, and it has to do with what's going on in the world. It's a spiritual thing. You know, it's a spiritual thing, and it's, it's all of us. Because I've had to fight that thing off myself. You know, it's like a blanket of, of like a dark cloud. Yeah, thank you, Lord. It's like a dark cloud, and you can't rebuke it. It has to go, but a lot of people don't know how to do that. So all I want to say, and I believe what the Lord is having me say to all of us on this line, who can hear me, pray for yourself and pray for your family members and even your enemies because there's just a spirit of just um, gloom and heaviness and, and regret. I keep hearing that regret. Well, I should have did this and I, why did I do that? And I wish I could go back and do this. And a lot of people can't do anything about a lot of stuff because some of the people that they're uh, referring to are no longer here. They, they, they passed on already. So God wants us to um, take this word and apply it. Don't just quote it, but apply it. It's true. The word of God is alive and active. And it, 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 it is real. It's real. The, you, the word works when you work it. You've got to, you've got to stir up the gifts within yourself. When you're feeling down and depressed, I, I'm talking to myself right now. I have to stir up my gifts within myself and encourage myself like David. 
get in the mirror. I don't care if my dog look at me like she is crazy. I preach to the dogs. I don't care. I talk and I speak the word of God out and I put on some music, some praise music, and, and hey, there you go. The devil can't stand an atmosphere of praise. And you may not feel like praise. You know, I don't want to pray. I don't even want to think about nothing. But you have to. Yes. You have to. This is where you push through. You push through. You push through like a athlete in training. It hurts, but it's a good hurt. You got to push through. No gain, no pain, baby. You got to push through. I don't want to go out there. I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to see nobody. You just want to get in the corner and roll up like a one of those roll weevil bugs. God said, no, 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 I need you. I need my body. I need my body, and you all need each other. You all need each other. You cannot disconnect. And that's, that's a spirit that says, I don't want to talk. I don't want to come on. I don't want to be I don't want to be bothered. God said, that's not of him, and you need to rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Woo! Okay? God looks at that as rebellion, as rebellion and disobedience. I'm not, I don't want to go over there and talk to them. I don't want to say nothing. I don't, you know... God said, uh-uh, not in my family, not in the family of God. This is a love family. And, and we get to talk to each other. And I'm the main one talking because that spirit attacks me the most. It attack, I get it real bad. I talk about what I don't want to do and what I don't want, what I'm not going and I'm not going to do this. And, and the Lord said, oh, no, 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 young lady. No, this is the body of Christ. The thumb needs the finger, the finger needs the hand, the arm needs the elbow. Every part of the body is important. Amen. And I'm going to leave that right there in Jesus' name. Amen. I know I'm going to be obedient. I don't want to be in trouble with daddy. Amen. 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 Excellent. So that's even a sin to, sin, to, sin to be sad too long. You know, God said, okay, you breathe for a little bit. You fell down. You bumped your little head. Get up. Let me kiss it. Mm, and keep it moving. But we're not going to wallow in this stuff. No, we're not going to let Satan have the victory in Jesus' yeah. name. Amen. Amen. I wanted Thanks. to share something with everybody that I heard yesterday, and it's more of a praise report than anything. That okay. during this, this coronavirus that's been going on, there has been yeah. thousands and thousands of people who have uh, basically changed their lives over and decided to follow Christ, and they've come right. to Christ. In the past yeah. two months, yeah. and you know, to me, that is just that's spectacular because that shows that God's word is going forth. Yeah, all of our are being answered, and it's for those that don't, that aren't afraid and know how to repeat that spirit you're talking about. That basically get out there and get that word out there, and yeah, just people look. These people are leading by example. People are wondering, well. How are you so calm during this whole thing? Because I right. have a peace in my heart. I have the Lord. And I know that if anything else fails, the Lord has got me. Amen. 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 Amen.